Hello, I'm James Mills, and you're watching CatX TV, broadcasting live from Princeton, New Jersey. The time is currently 11.30 a.m. in New York, 4.30 p.m. in London, and 12.30 p.m. in Hamilton, Bermuda. Firstly, on this day in 1962, the United Nations General Assembly adopts a resolution condemning South Africa's racist apartheid policies and calling on all its members to end economic and military relations with the country. Also on this day, Abraham Lincoln is elected the 16th President in, of the United States over a deeply divided Democratic Party, becoming the first Republican to win the presidency. And that was in 1860. We have no breaking news today, so we'll go straight to our main news. The Bank of England slashed its key rate to 3% from 4.5% today in a largely unexpected move. Markets have largely focused in a cut or forecasted a cut as large as 75 basis points, while most economists had expected half a cut point. The move by the bank's nine-member rate-setting monetary policy committee follows a decision last month to join in a global round of rate cuts by a major central bank. That decision saw the bank rate decline by 50 basis points, or half a percentage point, to 4.5%. The Frankfurt-based European Central Bank also cut its lending rate by half a percentage point to 3.25% today. And in further financial news, Japanese car firm Toyota has shocked analysts by announcing much lower than expected quarterly profits and slashing its earnings forecast for 2008. The maker of the Camry sedan and Prius saw net profit fall 69% to 139.8 billion yen in the three months of September. The firm also cut its net annual profit forecast to 559 billion yen, it's approximately 5.69 billion US dollars, for the year to 31st of March 2009, from an earlier estimate of 1.25 trillion yen. Toyota has been hit hard by the US slowdown as consumers cut spending. The global economic slowdown and the stronger yen, which hurts Toyota's exports, are expected to put an end to eight straight years of profit growth at the car maker. House prices in the UK fell by another 2.2% in October, says the Halifax, a major provider of mortgages in the UK, pushing the drop in house prices to 13.7% over the past year. The latest fall means the average UK home now costs £168,000, nearly £30,000 less than a year ago. The Halifax said this meant prices were now back to their level of October 2005. The lender said conditions in the market remained challenging because of economic conditions. The Halifax's latest survey of house prices chimes closely to that of its biggest rival in the UK, the Nationwide Building Society, which last week said prices had fallen 14.6% in the past year. When simply comparing the average price in October with the average price a year ago, the Halifax survey suggests that prices are down 15%. But the Halifax argues that this figure can be distorted by month-to-month -month fluctuations, and that the better method is to compare the average price of the past three months with the average price for the same period a year ago, which produces its current estimate of 13.7% annual fall. In the US, Barack Obama has started forming his administration by asking Rahm Emanuel, a former advisor to President Clinton, to be his chief of staff. US President-elect Obama is, the, is next expected to appoint a Treasury Secretary to tackle the country's economic crisis, something we've all become familiar with. He has until his inauguration on the 20th of January to select his senior officials. Mr. Obama was elected the first black US president on Tuesday with a resounding win over Republican rival John McCain. Mr. Obama's transition team is to be run by John Podesta, a former chief of staff to President Bill Clinton, Pete Ruse, who was, his, who was Mr. Obama's Senate Chief of Staff, and close friend Valerie Jarrett. 
No briefings or announcements are expected on Thursday, but Mr. Obama's staff said he would address the media by the end of the week. And following on from Barack Obama's win in the U.S., mothers in Kenya have marked Barack Obama's historic win in the U.S. by naming their newborns after him and his wife. More than half of the babies born in Kisumu Hospital on the day after the election were named either Barack or Michelle Obama. Kisumu is close to the village where Mr. Obama was born and raised Mr. Obama is a local hero. The region erupted into celebration after he won the race for the White House. Out of 15 babies born in the new Nazir Provincial Hospital in the western city of Kisumu on Wednesday, five boys were named Barack Obama and three girls were called Michelle. Despite record aerial eradication, coca cultivation in Colombia rose by 15% between 2000 and 2006, the report says. But the U.S. program, Plan Colombia, has helped reduce Colombia's kidnapping and murder rates while diminishing the threat from left-wing rebels, it adds. U.S. officials have said aid will be trimmed due to the financial crisis. Bogota receives around 600 million U.S. dollars a year in U.S. aid to combat drugs trafficking. The report recommends aid cuts, advising U.S. and Colombian officials to develop a joint plan for turning over operational and funding responsibilities for U.S. supported programs to Colombia. And now we'll go to a quick commercial break. Historic time to today, man's progress has been marked by his ability to fashion tools and use them to his advantage. From early humans making tools from stone, man evolved and was soon trading with other men. Money evolved and tools such as the abacus to handle complex money transactions were developed. By the end of the 19th century, machines such as the cash register began to appear. A hundred years later, we have even better computer-driven machines which track stock, change prices, and automatically reorder. Meanwhile, the reinsurance industry has failed to embrace man's drive for progress. The reinsurance industry today would be as familiar to practitioners from the 1800s as it is to modern underwriters. An underwriter or broker from 1800 would settle nicely into today's business. That is, until now. For the reinsurance industry, pivot point changes everything. Soon it will be understood that the period before Pivot Point was as dark as the caveman period was before the abacus. Come and see for yourself if you don't believe. After a demonstration, you will understand what is possible. The toll from flooding and landslides in Vietnam and South China is rising, with at least 51 dead in China and reports of 92 dead in Vietnam. In the Vietnamese capital, Hanoi, a cleanup is beginning after floods swept across the north of the country. Parts of southwestern China have been hit hard by flooding, uh, for more, well, and actually the worst flooding for more than a century, Chinese state media have said. Heavy rain over the past 10 days has caused landslides and mud rocks falling and flowing from the state of Yunnan. At least 43 people are missing in China's southwest, official media reports. A three-member Bangladeshi team is in Burma to hold talks with a 